Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be staring into the abyss of death. I've actually got an email here from a viewer who he's lost his girl, his business is going down the tubes, and he's on the verge of losing everything. And he says it's pretty much hopeless at this point. He's going to lose his house, his finances, his credit, his reputation, his career, everything is toast. And so he's staring into the abyss. He's obviously in a pretty dark place. I know what he's thinking he's feeling because I've been there several times in my life. I mean everybody goes through dark periods of their life. I remember when I was – I left Syntex Rooney back in the 90s, back in 1996 and I remember about four months after I had left, I had all my money tied up in these two properties. I had a contract on. I was based, I had to stop work on the second property because I ran out of money. I had a few thousand dollars in the bank and I remember my more – my closing was supposed to happen on a Friday. That would have given me my $10,000 of profit from the house plus the fifteen or $18,000 that was invested in the property. And so I would have given me you know, $25,000, $30,000 I would have walked away with at closing time. Then I would have been flush with cash again. I could have finished the rehab in the second property. And so I remember the house I had with my ex-wife at the time. There was, I was, my office was in the, in the back bedroom. I had a big window overlooking the pool, the jacuzzi. And we were kind of up on a hill. It was like Davenport, Florida, which is near Claremont. It's south of Disney World. About 20 minutes south of Disney World was the area. And I just remember sitting there. It was all these trees and stuff and because we were on a hill so I could see all – and it was a fairly new development or a new house. There were a lot of lots behind me. There were no houses so I could see right to this wetlands preserve. And it was, you know, it was a beautiful area and I just remember sitting there. I just got off the phone. This is like a Monday or a Tuesday with the mortgage broker and they weren't sure whether the loan was going to get approved or not for my buyer and I was thinking, fuck, the next Monday I got – the money after I close I'm, on Friday, I'm supposed to send out my mortgage payment. I didn't have the money in the bank to do that and I was just sitting there thinking – I was looking into the abyss. I was like – I was remembering what Mike Wood had said. He was the, the VP of Syntex Rooney and, and when I had resigned and told him what I was going to do, he says – he, did, he basically told me I did a great job. I can come back any time. He'd love to have me. Thought I did good work. And he said, but if you come back, I ask that you come back for good. In other words, he's saying if your business thing doesn't work out and you want to come back, you're going to be a lifer like me. And he'd been with the company 25 years. and it, I mean it was a great company. It was well run. I really respected him. I liked working for him. But working in a big company like it's just – wasn't my dream, was my vision. And so I'm like, here I am, four months after the fact, all my money's tied up in real estate, and this closing may or may not happen. And you know, not only was my mortgage on my house due, my car payment was due, I had two other houses, this this particular one that I had a contract on it was supposed to close, and I had another one, and I had like literally fifty thousand dollars in debt in my credit cards. It was had all been invested in these properties. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm literally on the verge of losing everything and my father-in-law had you know, warned me it was risky what I was doing. My, even my dad was telling me it was, it was a bad idea and I was just thinking, man, I was like waking up in the middle of the night with like nightmares that I was tending bar again or waking up. Like anytime I get really stressed about something in life, I wake up in the middle of the night like I was back in college thinking of my last semester before I was going to move to Orlando. And I had this class that was only offered once a year. And I had, you know, I the class was like once a week. And I, every once in a while, I would just skip a class and not go. And of course, the class I skipped is like, hey, we're gonna have a test next week, and um, this is what you need to study. So I'd show up and like, hey, we're having a test. I was like, oh fuck. And so I was literally didn't know whether or not I was gonna pass that class. You know, I think I am getting a C, like a C plus or something. I just like barely passed this class. It was one of the last ones I had. So I would wake up in the middle of the night or in the morning and it was such a real dream and I'm thinking, oh my god, I failed this test. I missed the last test. Oh my god, I'm going to have to wait a whole year to retake this class and then I can't, I can't move to Orlando. I can't do things I want. It's like, oh. And I would literally – it was so real and so vivid and I also would ha- have a nightmare that I was working tending bar back the place that I, I worked at when I was in college in my early 20s. It's just like, oh man. I remember thinking like it was yesterday. So I'm like staring in the abyss. And then I remember another another time that I had when – before I made the decision to get out of real estate, I had all my – I had a couple, several million dollars tied up in houses and this office building with my ex-business partners for my real estate ventures. 
And one of my new business partners basically said, well, you know, things aren't looking good and um, you probably should just file bankruptcy and liquidate and get what you can and I'm not going to invest in the company anymore and nothing personal. It's just business. So I got millions of dollars fucking tied up in real estate that wasn't liquid and I had like – Ten, fifteen thousand dollars in a bank, and my monthly expenses with my mortgage payments and the office billing, and my portion of that, and the two houses I had, because I had one of the houses on the market, and I was thinking, oh man, it's like I had all this success. I had, you know, my, I had my girlfriend at the time, and it's like I had a nice house. I was literally on the verge of fucking losing everything because it was all tied up, and I was not, I was a liquid, and I remember. My one of my I had two business partners at the time. We had this office building, and we had separated our mortgage companies, and our real estate companies, from one another. And I had decided to get out of the real estate business altogether at that point. And because this guy wasn't going to invest the money, he said the money that I was going to invest in the different version of our business was got all tied up in real estate. And the first contract we had on this office it fell through at the last minute. So I literally was about to have this big, huge influx of cash. Everything was great. And all of a sudden, very next day, boom. I'm literally about to completely be out of money. And, potentially, and the other interesting thing was the LLC agreement that I have with my business partners. I didn't see the fine print in there. And my accountant was the one that got this thing written up for us. There was a fucking line in there that basically said, if any of the partners don't make the mortgage payments, they basically lose all their equity and goes to the other partners. And so my other business partner, he was the same thing. He had a lot of money tied up in real estate and he wasn't very liquid. And this was you know, as the market was starting, it was a few months before the real the residential market started to go into a tailspin. And so my other partner, who was kind of a, a greedy, shallow asshole, I remember he told somebody that was a mutual friend of mine and my other business partner. Oh man, it's like I can't wait till Corey and James they miss their mortgage payments because then I get all the equity in the building. And he was just he was all excited about that. I was thinking, no, oh, what a fucking asshole. I was like thinking, what am I gonna do? And so I was thinking, I'm about to lose everything. I'm gonna have to go get a fucking job waiting tables or something. I had no plan, no nothing. I was all gonna lose every penny that I had ever had. Everything I had worked for over twenty years was gonna be just poof, completely gone. And so I put my house in the market and I didn't make my mortgage payment on it. And I literally I put it in the market. I think after two or three weeks, I got a contract on it. And it closed a few weeks after that. So I was flush with cash from one of my houses. And then a year later, we ended up getting a contract in the office building. And then that closed. And so I had a big windfall from that. And then my other house had sold and I liquidated everything else. I was like, it's, sometimes those things happen. And sometimes they don't, you know, that shit doesn't, doesn't work out. But I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I took all that money and I invested it in the business that I had now, and I got down on my last twenty thousand dollars, and I ended up sleeping on my dad's couch. I ended up waiting tables, fucking ten months, and I was willing to do it. It's, it sucked. I fucking hate every minute, and it's just like day after day after day. I was thinking to myself, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get off this fucking couch. I was like, oh. It was just brutal, man. I could remember it like it was fucking yesterday. It sucked fucking ass. It was like day after day after day after week after week after month after month after year after year. It's like you got all of supposed friends of yours that are going, oh, that, that's stupid. That's never going to work. I, oh, man, you should just go get a job. And, and it was just – it was a really difficult fucking – it was the most difficult time in my life. And I stuck with it because I believed in myself and I knew eventually I would figure it out. But I had basically at that point had run out of capital and in order to keep everything going and keep all my testing going, I took a bullshit job. I mean I was, my business was making me money but it wasn't enough to live a decent lifestyle and still pay my web developer. So most of my cash was going right back into the business to figure out the business model. And eventually it paid off because I stuck with it and I didn't quit. I didn't give up and a lot of people give up and this guy, he's going through a really dark fucking time. And I know a lot of people, they don't find, you know, they don't come to me because things are going well in their life. They come to me when shit's really going bad. So I've been through some really dark times in my life and you think about it, you think, 
my life's over. I'm going to lose it all. Might as well just go fucking sit in front of an oncoming train and it'll be over in a blink. And you think about things like that because you think the, the worst thing is not being able to do what you want. Seeing all your dreams and all of your hopes and everything you've ever fucking wanted for your life just completely evaporate from your life and you have no choice over it. And you're going to – and the, the you have the worst thoughts. You think your life's never going to get better and you're never going to get to where you want to be and you're going to be just like most everybody else in the world – Working a bullshit job, turn a bullshit fucking living, have a shitty lifestyle, and I was just like, I, I can't. I had all the success in my life, and here I am. And it's like Wayne Dyer said, it says, it's like I remember this quote like it was yesterday. He says, wherever you are in life, just remember that your best thinking got you to where you are right now. So I got a quote that I wrote. I'm going to go through this guy's email. And the quote says, everyone goes through dark times in their lives. No one is immune. These are times when you may lose your house, your business, your career, your good credit score, your money, your lover, and everything you have spent years building could all come crashing down into financial ruin seemingly overnight. The reality is that your greatest resource is your resourcefulness. When things like this happen, it's happening for a reason, even though it may be impossible to understand why at the time. Only once you are through your dark nights of the soul will you be in a peaceful and relaxed state to the point that you can see the gift of the experience and the necessary wisdom that it gave you. And I look back at that. I knew at the time when I was going through those, those difficult circumstances that I had to lean on everything that I had learned, all the self-help wisdom that I had learned and all the stuff that I was teaching to my clients. I mean they didn't know all the struggles that I was going through at the time. And that's why I can sit here where I'm doing really well and I have all the success and things that, that I went without with for many, many years. I know exactly where you are and I got out of it. You got out of it. I mean Elon Musk, founder of Tesla, SpaceX, PayPal, SolarCity, billionaire, one of the most successful guys in the world. He, he had the same situation back in – I think it was 2008. He literally – if he, his funding rounds didn't close and if he didn't get a gun, government – if his – they had like – they had all three of their first launches for SpaceX, all the rockets fucking blew up. And obviously the Air Force ain't going to give me contracts because the Air Force had, had a contract. He was launching a satellite in the, you know, on the third launch and it fucking blew up. So the satellite was lost. So they're like, well, we're not going to give these guys any contracts. I mean the last one fucking blew up. We want to see that they, they can actually launch this shit into orbit. And so all they had enough money left – I mean they had employees that were writing checks to the company to help keep it going and you know, thinking oh, I'm probably going to lose this money. But fuck, I believe in what we're doing. And so their fourth launch went off without a hitch. It, it, it had a dummy payload because there was no satellite because the Air Force didn't want to risk another satellite blowing up. But they were able to prove that they, – they launched a dummy satellite into orbit and they were able to prove that it worked. And like literally on Christmas Eve – he said it was like the last hour of the last day. He was basic about – and he had every penny of his that he had made from PayPal that he had walked away when he had sold that and tens of millions of dollars from investors, tens of millions of dollars from family and friends all invested in this. And he was literally on the verge of losing it. And what's interesting, back to what I was talking about earlier about my partner who was like, oh, I hope Corey and James don't make their payments because then I get the whole billing all myself and I get all that equity. A greedy fucker. Well, one of the venture capitalists that had invested in Tesla, what they wanted to do was take Tesla and sell off, liquidate it and sell off all the assets and take control of the company and boot Elon out, out of his company. And that had pretty much happened at every company he had before. So here he is faced with the same thing. He's about to lose everything and he's got this equity investor that's basically trying to fuck him over, take take his company and just liquidate it and never and therefore his vision will never be fulfilled at what he planned to do with Tesla. So it's like his whole life's work. Everything that he wanted to do as a man and despite all the success that he had, all the hundreds of millions of dollars that he sold his previous companies for, he's fucking that close, a hair's breadth away from fucking losing everything. He was stressed as fuck and he had a quote that I really love. He says, being an entrepreneur is like eating glass and staring into the abyss of death. And it's so true. That's what I mean. Sometimes, as, as a man, 
you're going to be faced with situations like this. Sometimes it's going to work out and sometimes it's not. And like for me, I had had several situations where I was literally on the verge of losing everything and it fucking all worked out at the last minute. Well, by the end of – by 2009, I, I pretty much ran out. I spent everything I had. I had nothing fucking left and I was like I still end up having to go get a thing I wanted to avoid more than anything was to go back and wait tables or 10 bar or anything like that again. Was, I had nightmares about that for fucking years after because I fucking hated it. And I went back and I did something I hated so I could eventually do something that I love. And it all worked out in the end even though I had to do a lot of shit for a while that I really didn't want to fucking do. And I was fucking not a happy guy. I was fucking pretty pissed off and it sucked but it all worked out because I kept taking action. I kept fucking moving forward. I didn't fucking stop. So back back to the quote about the the wisdom. So it says the only way it continues on the only way out of dark times is to take action and focus on doing what is absolutely necessary to get you from where you are right now to where you want to be. You must participate in your own rescue. That reminds me of something else like Tony Robbins. He was about to go on stage. This was I think early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. And literally minutes and seconds – or actually seconds before he's about to get on stage in front of like 5,000 people to do like a, a three-day UPW. This is Mr. Success, right? But the best life coach in the world, most successful peak performance coach in the world, charges $250,000 to have him come speak in an event for two, three hours. He's about to go on stage and the guy that was running his company comes up to him and says, hey, I just wanted to let you know I'm resigning. I quit and by the way, you're bankrupt. Good luck, champ. And he left. It was just his way to say "fuck you," I I don't you kiss my ass, and he just totally fucking screwed him over, and like the I mean you imagine, peak performance coach is about to go on stage, he thought he was still a millionaire, and this guy just fucking ran his company into the ground, he's like well you're fucking bankrupt, and there's five thousand people that are in really difficult situations, and he's expected to be happy and upbeat, and it's like we can do this and. And so he worked his ass off. He never had to file bankruptcy, but you know things were really fucking dicey for a while, and that that's a difficult, stressful situation. So everybody's got no matter where you are, it's just the difference between really wealthy people and yourself is just they just got a lot more zeros <laughs> in, in their bank account. Their problems are just there's more zeros attached to it, and when they fail, their failures are even more spectacular than yours. So no matter how badly things are going in your life, there's always somebody that's doing worse. So he says, hey, Corey, I wrote you before and it was entitled Fix This One or some dumb shit like that. Looking back, it was disrespectful but I didn't know you at the time. And so I did a – I answered his email in a video newsletter called Stuck in a Rut. And if you're watching this on my website, there will be a blue link somewhere in the article. You just click on that and if you want to actually see where he was whenever that last – video was you can check it out I've been listening to your videos and bought your book and you did fix this one by the way again it was called it stuck in a rut was a title of it so if you want to google Corey Wayne stuck in a rut I'm stuck in a rut that was a title of that particular article I was at the lowest point in my life because of my ex-girlfriend I ruined everything I thought I watched your videos at 3 a.m. and it was a start of getting back on track I'm writing to you now because of business I'm going under there is no question. There is no way out. I'm going to lose everything. I will lose my house, my career, and my name, and I don't see a way out. I only know one thing. The future for me is out of control. There is a downward trajectory that is a vortex into homelessness, worthlessness, and cowardice. I know exactly what you're thinking and feeling, dude. I've been there many times in my life and it fucking sucks. And if even if you lose everything and your credit is fucked, Get a bankruptcy attorney. I mean, even you had to fucking wait. Live like a college student. So what? Your greatest resource is your resourcefulness. Just like I said in the quote. And it's so true. I mean, you can rebuild your credit in two to three years. Lease a car before you go under. That's a two or three year lease. That way, that's a small payment. You get a nice car to drive around because in the bankruptcy, they're not going to come take that away because it's, it's basically a rental. You're basically renting a car. So you can use that to rebuild your credit and everything else, credit cards, all that shit. Just fucking wipe it out. Start all over. So what? Live like a college student. At some, 
I mean, there was a point in your life when you had nothing to start with, and at the end of the day, your reputation. So what? I mean, Donald Trump filed bankruptcy in his businesses. He's doing all right now. Elon Musk is doing pretty fucking well. I'm doing pretty fucking well. Tony Robbins is doing pretty fucking well. I mean, everybody that's really successful has gone through these periods, and you're just going through years. I know it sucks, but you'll get through it. Just what do I need to do right now? What do I need to take action on right now? How do I get myself – what is the most critical thing I need to do right now? What phone call do I need to make right now? What action do I need to take right now? And that's what you got to focus on. you got to get in the present moment and just focus on what actions you need to take because if you sit back and you just worry about it, you're going to f- cause yourself to get into a fearful state and it's just going to expand and it's going to scare you and it's going to – I mean remember, inaction breeds fear and doubt. Taking action breeds confidence and courage. And if you're busy taking action, you get in the present moment because the only thing you have control over is what you do right now. If you lose everything, you lose everything. So what? You buy another house, you can reestablish your credit two to three years. Big fucking deal. You can rent until then. Who cares? It's just a fucking house. Your house is not your identity. But it's like what happens is you become associated with all – I was the same way. I was a guy who was on TV. I walked around town. Everybody knew who I was. Hey, you're that fucking real estate guy. Chicks are like, hey, you're that fucking real estate guy. You're really handsome or whatever it happens to be. And then you're walking around. It's like, hey, dude, what happened, man? What happened to your business? Where'd it go? I mean, it's like, that's humbling to go through something like that. But it was like, fuck it. I'm doing something even better now. I'm doing something even more exciting and compelling. The business I have now gives me more enjoyment, more pleasure, more freedom. And I'm, I spend my life my own way without any fucking business partners telling me what I can and can't do, what I should and shouldn't do, what I can and can't spend money. I don't have to do with any of that shit anymore. If I want to do something, I just fucking do it. And it's fucking wonderful. It was worth it. It was worth all the struggle and everything I went through. I mean, I've been in this business now. I got into it in 2000. It's like 10 fucking years I've been doing this. And I remember like it was yesterday, but there was a lot of fucking years. There was five, six years of just fucking struggle and not knowing when things were going to turn around, not knowing when when I was really going to get back to living a great lifestyle. Because even when I figured my business model out, it's just a matter of doing the work, doing videos, answering emails, publishing articles, building my website working on my book, refining my book, all those little things. I just focused on what do I need to do right now today and I did that and it all paid off. It's just time and repetition. If you run out of capital, I mean capital's money basically. You, gotta, you need money to, to fund your operations. So if you got to lower your expenses or increase your revenue. It's the only way about it. Get yourself a good attorney, bankruptcy attorney if you need to. Like I said, in three, four years, get a new house, whatever you want. It's like you got to do what makes you happy. You got to do what you love. Even if you have to live like a college student for five or six or even ten years, so what? I mean, sometimes industries happen. Sometimes, I mean, the mortgage business goes through. I mean, when I got out all that stuff and I had liquidated all my real estate, that's when the market just fucking cratered. And I was like, holy shit, I am so glad I got out of that business before. You know, it's not that I saw that coming because nobody really saw that coming. But. Man, it's like if I'd have waited just six more months to put my properties, I would have lost everything, and I would have had no money to start the business that I was in. I would have been waiting tables for years and years and years. Oh man, I would have a lot of fucking gray hair and big circles under my eyes if that was the case. I'm literally going under in ways that feel like the Titanic sinking everyone in. Your videos keep me on the right path in a positive state, but there is no way out of the ultimate end that awaits me. People like me need to lose so very much and even you, people like you must admit some can't be saved. You got to participate in your own rescue. You guys, you just got to change your approach, dude. So what? That happens. It happens that any successful person has gone through difficult times. And even that business partner that I used to have that said, hey, you should just file bankruptcy. No, it's personal. It's just business. He he became a multimillionaire in real estate in the early 70s or late 70s, early 80s, and during a recession, he got fucking wiped out. He lost everything. And he learned. It's like when you go through those kinds of periods, they're very traumatic. It's like people went through the Great Depression. It's like That really has an effect on you and your psyche. You take it with you your whole life. And you learn to be more balanced in, in having money in the bank and having a way to keep things going. If you can do a video on how to rescue someone like me, people like me who are going to lose everything, I'd appreciate it. 
I can't afford a coaching session. I was going to, but I can't even do that. Please tell me what winners do when they are at the end, at the abyss. There was a there was a, a quote by a song, uh, "Semi Sonic Closing Time." Every beginning comes from other beginnings. End. It's just, it's not the end. It's just the end of the beginning. You, you'll get there eventually. Maybe it takes you another five or ten years to get a really successful business going. But you got to move towards what you love and what makes makes you feel good and what makes you happy and what's compelling to you. Because if you don't love it, you're never going to work that hard at it. That's why I stuck with this and, and eventually made it work because nothing was more compelling than what I'm doing right now. It's the, it's the worst it has ever been and I can't stop the inevitable ruin that awaits me. Again, your credit report does not define you. Your house does not define you. Your reputation does not define you. Your friends don't define you. Your ex-girlfriend doesn't define who you are. The only thing that defines who you are is what you decide who you are is. You can't always change your circumstances in life but you always have control over what it means to you. That's something to think about. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session with yours truly. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.